What's up? Who we got? Are you out there? Are you out there? Are you out there? I'm gonna give you a quick second to come in, join me while we rock out to one of my songs. This is called Your Amazing Love and it's an entire bop. You hear me? Hey, Tammy. What's up? GG! How are you guys? Come on in, come on in, come on in. What up, fam? What up, fam? I'm excited to see you guys. Just try to get to like maybe 10, 15 people before we get started with the with the program. Hi, Jenny. Sorry for the delay. Sister! Sorry for the delay in greeting you guys because I'm seeing things a bit slower than they're actually happening in real time. Hi, babies. Hi, Ashley. That's my jam, y'all. What up, Kenny? Wait, we're about to have 20 people? Awesome. Ashley, how are you? Ah, uh, thanks. I put on my good hair when I actually did my face. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thanks so much for being with me. What's up? What's good? How are you guys doing? I mean, how's it How's it hanging? Let me tell you. Because, you know, all I know how to do is be real, real. These past couple of days have kicked my entire butt. And that's a lot of kicking. Okay? I gotta try to put you guys. Sorry, your comments. I can't see. How do I do that? Oh, boom. No. Y'all work with my own technical difficulties while I figure this out. Anyway, um, we had a big, huge storm come through here in, um, where do I live? Nashville. It's called a derecho, a derecho for you Nashvillians, which in Spanish means either right as in the direction or it can mean, it can mean straight. Uh, what I will say is that ain't nothing right about a stinking derecho, okay? Apparently, the winds, it's like just a massive storm system. We cover up to six to 700 miles or square miles or miles, I think. I don't know. I'm going off of what I read a few days ago before I was without power for several days. Um, but it just blows crazy winds. We had winds clocked at like 70, 75 miles an hour. Out of nowhere, it can cause hurricanes and cause tornadoes and cause, I just was calling it a junior tornado because this mess came through and ripped up the town in like 10 minutes and left. And so a bunch of us, I think there were about 130,000, 150,000 Nashvillians without power. And so I'm just gonna say, going several days without power with a three-year-old is not God's best for my life. <laughs> Y'all, we're just getting power like consistently today, this morning. It's the first time we've had power where it hasn't flickered on and off and this, that, and the other. So, yay. And excuse me for being a little bit um, scattered. I'm excited that you guys are here. And I think we've got a really, really dope show, if I can say that. Um, uh, just so welcome and thank you for being with me. It, it really does mean a lot to me that you would take time out of your busy days. You guys are homeschooling and doing all kinds of things with your families and just juggling all of the things and so it, it matters a lot to me that you guys are here and so um just before we jump into our subject matter i want to once again kind of let you know how this show operates i think the cool thing about what's going down with lisey brown is that it's not the typical talk show format um where i just talk at you guys um, this is the deal. You guys will send me a few, like send me your questions, anything at all that you would like to see potentially answered live. Um, I will pick two or three of them while maintaining your anonymity, anonymity, anonymity while maintaining your c anemones, <laughs> while maintaining your anonymity, um, unless you ask me to reveal who you are. Um, I'll, I'll pick two or three of those questions and um, I'll answer them using the tools that I've got, which is the word of God, my crazy life experiences, and a little bit of humor, if humor is at all appropriate in the matter. And I almost find humor always appropriate. So um, 
but this is where it differs. I want you guys to chime in as well. Um, there'll be a time where I ask you guys your opinion on the matter so that the person who asked the question can not only get my opinion, but hear from <laughs> my dad said, daddy in the house. So be careful. I'll be very good. Dad, I'll, I'll, I'll make you proud of me. At least I'll try to. Um, you guys will get to answer the question too, so that the person who is asked the question not only gets to hear my big mouth, but gets to kind of get a, a gauge of what people are saying. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be really, really cool. Um, Cause I'm not gonna just be talking at you, but with you. So let's get started, okay? And hopefully every, um, every episode will go about 30 minutes long. I don't wanna take up all your little time, but sometimes you might go over and then, you know, just come back and watch again if you have to go. Okay, so my first question, and I've gotta say that you guys did not um, start easy. Like, I was hoping maybe for some, um, what kind of lip gloss do you use? Or, um, you know, just light and surface stuff. No, y'all went deep immediately. Good Lord, you people have things that you, <laughs> y'all got issues. No, I, I really do appreciate all of them. And, um, I'm excited about jumping in, but I will say that I was not expecting to go go that deep that quickly, but I'm glad I'm glad that you guys came at me that way because I'm I, I'm I'm real and I want us to be real with one another and I, I would love for us to have a safe place where we can just talk things out, hash things out. Okay, so my first question, let me see. Y'all, I'm coming from second. Peter. <laughs> I'm joking. All right. The first question is, if you could go back to your younger self and speak to yourself, what is the one thing you would tell her, yourself, whatever, you know, what would you tell your younger self is essentially the question. <sighs> That's a really good question. And I will be honest. I tried to find some surface, quick, easy stuff, but I couldn't. I just immediately was like, oh gosh, what would I tell my young self? Um, I think like most girls um, in their adolescent years, their, your young teenage years, I, I struggled with self-confidence quite a bit, quite a bit. And to be perfectly honest, it's been a lifelong struggle. And I know that most people don't get that from me because of moments like this and how um, expressive I can be and you've seen me on stage or you've seen me in a ministry position or we're very close friends and you're just used to me being wild and crazy. But the truth of the matter is, is that I have dealt with insecurity and self-confidence issues for as long as I've known myself. I mean, as long as I've known myself. And um, I think in some way that, that kind of goes for everyone you know, especially carrying whatever you went through in your adolescence into, you know, your adulthood, being teased and taunted and all of that stuff because kids suck and they're mean, um, you know, all of that stuff. But I think for me, it was a little bit extra because um, of my adoption. As most of you know, I was placed for adoption when I was a very, very small baby and my incredible parents adopted me when I was... I think I was in their home by the time I was six weeks old or nine weeks or something like that. My parents are watching and I'm, they can chime in. Um, and my parents were very open with me about being adopted and how our family came to be. And it was always a very um, beautiful, beautiful thing. Like I loved that our family had that story, but I also had a lot of questions about what made me so different or so wrong or, you know, why was I given up? Why was I placed for adoption? Um, and, you know, I would ask my parents and, and we always had incredible conversation and they helped me through it amazingly, but it was something that always kind of plagued me. Um, my dad says it was six weeks exactly. Six weeks old is when I came to live with them. Um, and I think I kind of took that and just coupled with being a skinny, big-eared, fro-curly, reddish-having-hair kid, um, 
and just never really kind of feeling confident in myself. I took that and I just felt really, really different. I felt like there was something about me that must not have been good enough. Um, and that's just, you know, that's how the enemy does. He takes what's beautiful and um, deranges it. So that's, you know, par for the course. But as a kid, you can't really cipher through all of that stuff. You can't really, you know, rightly divide all of that stuff. You're just going through it. Um, and then, unfortunately, I, I also went through several years of sexual abuse, which is a completely different, different topic that we'll go deeper into at some points, I'm sure. But what that did for my self-esteem was deadly. Honestly, it was deadly. Um, it kind of left me feeling, in a word, I'd say unworthy. Or it made me feel that the things that I, that what I was worthy of was the crap that I was feeling and the stuff that I was getting. Um, and so, you know, after thinking about it, I, I just basically wrote a letter to myself because if I could, I would take that skinny, <laughs> awkward, lanky, goofy, painfully introverted girl and grab her by the face and say these things. So if you'll, if you'll permit me to read this little letter I wrote to myself, and hopefully I can get through it without messing up my makeup because I ain't putting on no more makeup till Sunday when we live stream at Christ Church, <laughs> okay? So she runs, she stays running. All right, I would say this. Lisi, girl, you are worthy. I know your life is really hard at some points. I know you've felt abandoned for as long as you can remember. I know that there have been some who have been careless with your heart and left you feeling even more alone and unworthy, but know this. Your worth can't be found in anyone or anything besides the person of Jesus. And he thought you were so worth it and worthy that he gave his life for you. And he calls you his workmanship. In Ephesians 2.10, he said, we are created for created in him for good works. He says that you're an overcomer and a conqueror. In Romans 8 and 37, more than conquerors through him that loved us. He says that you are known and that even the, the number of hairs on your head are counted and known. Um, you can find reference for that in Psalms 139, 13, 14, and in Luke 12 through 7. So hang in there, girl. You're in for an amazing ride. And never feel, never feel that you have to accept anything less than God's best for you. You are worthy. I think that's what I would tell myself. Whew, I made it. I did it and I did not cry. <laughs> worthy. Um, it, it took a lot of Jesus and good therapy. <laughs> and um, good friends and healthy relationships to get me to the place that where um, that even on my bad days, because if I'm being honest, that's an issue that kind of just stays, in my opinion. Um, well, it has for me. Um, it's one of those things that can just pop up when you least expect it, when you least expect it. Um, but I've gotten to the place where even on my worst days, and they are <laughs> many sometimes that I know that I don't have to look within my own self to find my worth. My worth isn't based off of what I feel, what I look like, the weight I've gained, the weight I've lost, how many chins, how many chin hairs, because oftentimes that can affect one's self-worth. <laughs> All I have to do is look to Jesus um, and remember that anything that does not reflect what he says about me is a lie, whether I feel it or not. Um, and that kind of helps to bring me back to center and um, feel grounded again. So yeah, thank you. Um, thank you friend for that question. Whew, you made me go deep. 
listen, I wish that I, that I had truly grasped, grasped that fact when I was a kid, because baby, the story of my life would have read very differently, minus a few uh, jokers, jackals, and two-bit players but, that got to make an entrance and, and stay for a few chapters in my life story. But um, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and growth, and blah blah blah, all those things. So I'm grateful for my journey. I'm grateful for my story. But yeah, I think I would tell myself, girl, you are worthy, and don't accept anything but the best for yourself. Um, if you, if you viewing audience, if you could say anything to your younger self, what would it be? What would you try to tell yourself? I know I won't have the chance to read all of your comments, but if you could. Just give me a couple of, um, you know, just a couple of ideas of what you would try to tell yourself if you were able to reach back into the bounties of time and slap yourself in the face. <laughs> what would you say? I tell me you don't know anything, but the best answer is often I don't know, but let me find out. Amen. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Aaron, that's good, good. Do not get a student loan. Listen, don't run from anybody with the name Sally Mae. <laughs> so comedy first, that is a lot of hair. Yes, Julie, you know me. Let's see. Um, the Lord then trapped the whole world in our homes. And if you can speak that to yourself and really believe it, it is worth it. Put it out there for the world. Oh, you guys are so sweet. You would say, Janetta says, girl, just keep going. Don't let anyone's opinion of you stop your momentum. Yes. Tammy says, not to sweat the small stuff and what other th others think. Stand strong in who you are and not conform to what the world wants. Yes, 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 yes. I think, uh, I think self-esteem is one of these things that everybody can relate to because at some point, we just second guess ourselves and we've got a, a billion reasons why um, we don't think that we're a very credible source or that um, if there's something going on in our relationships, it's our problem, we caused it or whatever it is. But um, when you really start to try to mirror what you feel by what the word says, that will bring you due north every time, every time. Uh, Rebecca says, high school is just the beginning of your life. Don't stress it so much. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Listen, I almost flunked out of high school. <laughs> Listen to me. I was in a hard, hard season. Sister, my, my, my sister, her name is Denise, says to not let fear or insecurity keep you from living your best life. Absolutely, absolutely. High school for me, my dad says, don't feel you need to <laughs> eat the kids leftover fries. <laughs> Ooh, I need to learn that right now. This is quarantine diet. Um, high school for me was a very, very hard time because of that um, that period of sexual molestation that I was telling you about. I was in the middle. My whole freshman year was a court case and my head was not on the books. It wasn't in anything but surviving and I was not doing well. I, I think that at the end of my freshman year, I want to say I had like a one three average. And they brought my parents in and they, you know, we had a school that was a vocational school that was connected to our high school. And my parents, they tried to tell my parents that, you know, she's really creative. Maybe she could do nails, which maybe I could have. But, um, you know, that was all that I could think about at the time was how I was failing, how I wasn't good enough, how this, how that, how that. My world was topsy-turvy. Jeez, that was such a small fragment of my life. I spent such angst. I had such angst in that season. I wish I would have, um, you know, you can't really as a kid see the big picture, but you know, if, if, if I could, I think <laughs> it would have been lovely and a little bit frightening for me with all this hair to pop into 1994 and tell my freshman self, girl, you're going to get through this. It's not that big a deal. You'll be fine. And then I graduated from college with honors. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Thank you guys for that. Um, let's jump to the next question, which thankfully, what baby? Well, thankfully was not as deep. 
but still a good question. Okay, question two. Y'all might hear my, my Yasmin Rose making requests and things like that from the family room. She is watching Bluey. Yeah, Bluey. <laughs> and I, apparently it went off, but she gonna have to watch that screen. Okay, and she's gonna do Princess Jasmine's hair. It's gonna be very pretty. Okay, baby, thank you. Question number two. Hey, Elysia, I know this sounds like a, a no-brainer type question, but are you ever too old to benefit from vocal training? I had some throughout high school and thought I used my voice pretty well, but since, but since I've been in college, I feel as if that's gone away and like my range slash tone have absolutely gone down the drain. I know I'm reading this person's words, so it feels very weird to say this. I know you're a very distinguished and skilled vocalist, so I was curious um, what your take was on this. Thank you for that question. I am no distinguished vocalist by any means at all, but I have spent quite a bit of my life using my big old pie hole um, for ministry and to make a living, so I, you know, I kind of, I might have something to say on the subject matter. Um, and this is honestly a question that I get fairly often. The answer to the question, no, 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 no. It is never too late to benefit from vocal training. It, it is not. Matter of fact, I recommend that if you're, you know, if, if you're going to be using your voice for your trade or whatever, that it's something that you do throughout your life. Um, the voice is a muscle. We've heard that repeatedly. But what the voice is, um, the sound of your voice is produced by vibrations of your vocal cords, which sit inside um, the larynx. But they sit side by side each other and they kind of hit and, and bounce off of one another and that's how you produce sound. But it is a muscle. And so it can be strengthened and it can be weakened. So say for example, um, say that you were a killer athlete when you were in college. You're young, you're 19, 20 years old. You were in the best shape you've ever been in. Your body would respond to any command that you gave it like that. You have um, lived in a place where just this, 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 that's what you know of your body, right? While you're in college. Well, if you go just a few years, <laughs> really, if you go a few months, but if you go just a couple of years out after college and you haven't worked out and you haven't trained and you're not putting that kind of demand on your body, if you go back and try to do what you used to do when you were in the prime condition of your life, you will probably hurt yourself. <laughs> um, you could do potential damage to your body. So in the same way, the voice being a muscle, it's like that. Um, you know, it kind of, there's certain things that are in your muscle memory, certain things that you don't have to work so hard for all of the time. But if you're not maintaining and stretching and, you know, working on your skill, you'll lose it. Honestly, you will lose it. Your gifting will still be there, but your skill won't be. So I think it is very important to, um, to maintain some vocal training if, if that is important to you. Um, Honestly, voice can be expensive. Studying voice can be expensive, but you don't have to spend just a lot of money. There's all kind of tools that are um, that are at our disposal, especially now in this quarantine season. Jump on YouTube, look up um, vocal, uh, what do you call it, Jesus? I just went blank. Vocal exercises. For lack of a better word, there's a specific word I'm looking for, but I can't find it. Um, you can do certain vo voice exercises. You can find very credible sources. Um, I know I have about a billion people. <laughs> Tim, listen, Tim Bush talking about some teach me how to sing. Sir, I haven't forgiven you for this last single you released. Y'all need to get my friend Tim Bush's single. What is it called? Where the spirit of the Lord is, I am free. What is it, Tim? F free in Jesus' name? I don't know. He sings, he sings, sings. It's rude, it's ridiculous, and it's, it's dope. It's dope, it's dope, dope. Tim, tell people how to find you. Um, and I'm not teaching you, Jack. You need to teach me, okay, okay. Um, 
you can do just a few things every day on your own that will keep you in better shape. I do, you see me using a straw all the time. I'm always taking a picture with a big old straw. Straw phonation is a, is a thing that I won't have time to go into. Free in Jesus, Tim says. Free in Jesus, yes. And these lessons on YouTube are free in Jesus. Huh? <laughs> see? <laughs> see how he brought that thing together? <laughs> uh, jump on YouTube or look within your city. Um, there's vo vocal coaches who will do Skype lessons. When I teach, I do FaceTime lessons and Skype lessons. I need to be taking lessons right now from my girl is Liz Johnson. And I've been so just overwhelmed, honestly, with all of the things that are going on. I haven't been as good of a student as I need to be in this time. So, you know. I'm preaching to myself as well, but you absolutely can. Um, if you're a vocalist or um, have any kind of input for my friend who wants to know um, some tools that they can use, my dad says we watch you some pract practice slash warm up tapes when you uh, outgrew voice teachers at the time. Yes, 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 yes. Tapes, Jesus. Whole cassette tapes. Whew. I had a whole um, attache case. <laughs> that I kept my accompaniment tracks in when I went out and sang. And then like two or three of them were just vocal warm up things. But yes, 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 yes. All right, folks. I'm pretty sure that's just about our time. I don't want to keep on rambling because I promised you that we would be out of here in 30 minutes or so. But um, hey, Tam Tam. Um, I'm so glad that you joined me today. I feel like incredibly wound up to be perfectly honest uh hopefully as we get further and further into this into this concept and into the um <laughs> joy who was your favorite voices of lee alto joy dockery neville clearly um uh as we get further and deeper into this process i will i will get more hey tori i will get more classy and refined and not annoying to watch but thank you for joining me. And um, it, it means so much to me. Listen, I need your help. I need your help. In order to um, get this to the masses easier, I would really love to go through YouTube Live and then be able to stream to all of my social media platforms and just have it available on YouTube. But the catcher is you need to have a thousand subscribers. So that's why I've been all in your face begging you to subscribe. If you haven't done so, um, I'll post a link on my page once more so you can check it out. Um, we went from 61 viewers to like 406, I think, in just a week. That is incredible. Like, you guys are awesome. I'm so, so glad to have you guys as my people and as my viewing audience and my homies. I love you all so, so much. Yaya, yeah, yeah. you did really, really good. Y'all get... <laughs> And we will see you next Wednesday at 3. Have a good day. Bye.